Hello, Copic and the Craft Room fans. We are back for another week of creative fun. I have a whole mishmash of things going on today. So, here's what we're doing. I am gonna be doing a page in um, my Bible, a Bible journaling page, and I am using a beautiful, beautiful stamp set from Dare to Be Artsy. They invited me to come and do some artwork with them, and so I have used um, this set called The Potter, and I have stamped it, and I've stamped it multiple times. I've got it on my regular Copic paper. I've got it on a couple of different types of vellum, kind of this gold and just a standard vellum. And I'm not completely sure what I'm gonna do with that yet, but what I am, do know what I'm gonna do, or one piece I'm gonna do is I am gonna use um, some of this new paint from Tommy Arts. Um, it's a chalk color paint and it is beautiful and gorgeous. And I actually think it's gonna work great in my journal pages because the paper in here is super, super fine, like so lightweight and it's more like um, a tracing paper weight. And because one of the most awesome features or one of the awesome features about this paint is it's really flexible, like it won't chip, it doesn't, but it has this nice matte finish. And so what I'm gonna do is I have my sketchbook here and I'm gonna try first what I'm gonna do for the background with the paints. And then I am going to put that in my journal and do the image on top of that. And there's a couple of different ways I can do it, but I'll show you kind of what I at least have in my head so far. So there's gonna be some Copic coloring. There's gonna be some painting with Tommy Art. And yeah, that's what we're doing. So I'm gonna start on my sketchbook. And if you've done some art journaling or any type of um, journal painting before, you've probably seen this technique. I also like the Tommy Arts because, or Tommy Art paint because this is all water cleanup. So it's really, really easy to clean up. I've got some really fun um, kind of sample size paint colors. Now this stuff comes in over um, like 40 plus colors. This is English blue and turquoise. And then I also have an antique white in a full size because I knew I'd need more of this guy. But I've also figured I can kind of lighten with that color as well. So get this guy mixed up good. I've been dying to get started with these and I have finally felt like now I have some time to play with them a bit. And then I've got a plastic card. So I'm gonna put some paint down and then I'm gonna spread it, which a lot of you have probably seen before. It's not a new technique by any means. It does not take a lot of paint for this. Um, these paints are super opaque and um, they just spread really, really easily. I could use any kind of card for this. I do not need anything special. But I wanna kinda of create um, like an ombre effect. Now I am thinning these down super, super thin. I could do kind of a single coat of this and I probably wanted to wipe my brush off. Now because this is a chalk paint, it dries really fast. So you can see it's literally sitting right on top. It hasn't blended at all. So if I'm gonna want it to blend, I really am probably gonna have to do more of a brush work with it instead. So I am gonna do, cause I would like it to be a little more blended. So I'm gonna try, keep experimenting here and I'm not really cleaning my brush up in between. So I might end up with a little contamination I'm going into this knowing that, but that's more the look I was going for. Yeah. And then I think I'll do the same up here. There we go. Okay. 
So I really like the way that looks and actually doing those two steps of doing the card first and then the brush actually worked pretty well. So this is actually gonna dry really, really fast. Um, this works really well on paper. I have a tiny bit of bowing, but honestly, as this dries, most of this, the wrinkles will disappear and we can kind of come back to that. Um, that's one of the benefits of this type of paint, um, of this brand of paint, is that it actually, you won't see a lot of buckling in the paper. I've used it really thin. The other thing that is amazing about this is that I can actually fold this paper once it's dry and it's not gonna um, break or pop at the seams or crack. Um, it's very flexible. And so another really neat attribute, but it's a really light coating and that's really what I'm looking for for this project. So I've experimented. And what I love about this now is I've got this really pretty page in my sketchbook and I can come back and do something fun with this as well. So it's always good. Go ahead and practice on something that you might use later. And that way you've got this great thing to come back to. So what I am gonna do is not near as big, and that's part of this, is once I start in here, this is a much smaller um, section because I tend to work truly in the margins and I wanna stay out in those margins instead of kind of overlapping and so I've got my verses picked out and I'm gonna work on top of those later, but the painting portion of this is gonna stay as best I can out into those margins. And I'm gonna work fairly quickly. I'll go ahead and zoom you in a little bit. So while this is drying, I'm gonna set this aside and I'm gonna go ahead and grab my vellum that I stamped. I'm making messes as usual. So I have stamped on um, my vellum or tracing paper. And what I wanna remember is when I do my Copic coloring on vellum or something, lighter weight like this, even if I'm stamping with a Copic compatible ink. And in this particular instance, I used um, an ink by Dare to Be Artsy. It is actually very Copic compatible. It works really well with the pens, the markers. Um, but if I color on this um, side where I've stamped, it is gonna still blend the, or smear the ink. It's gonna get on my marker nibs. So when I'm working on vellum or tracing paper, I flip the image over and I'm gonna color from the back side. So I'm gonna use a series of E9s for the little pottery piece. And then I'm gonna come in with a little bit of blue and some detail work. So I am starting with an E93 on the pottery piece and then E97 to do some shading. You're gonna notice immediately on the, I'm working on tracing paper similar to a vellum and then E99, they sit on top of each other. They don't blend like you normally would see. So I'm going back with an E97 and an E93 to kind of pull that color across. It's not gonna blend smoothly. E97 for just some touch-ups in between. B14 for some of the blue design on the pottery, and then B16, there's not a huge contrast, again, a lot of times we don't see as much contrast when we're working with something like a vellum or um, tracing paper. So I decide I better grab a different marker. B28 is going to come in and add a little bit of ombre effect from the bottom of the letters up and just a tiny bit of detail on the stripes on the pottery. I smooth that out just a touch by pulling it with the B16 on the letters just to kind of pull that up a little bit. And then I'm going to start working on adding that into the journal page. So I'm truly just hand tearing this, sizing it down, and then I mark that real quickly and trim it off with my paper cutter. Tape that down with some washi tape, and I want it to lift, so I'm leaving the bottom edge unattached. I'm adding some At You Speak -a, um, glitter pin onto that, and then I also add a Cura Reno Wink, which is 
a paint pen in it, this is also in gold. So I had several things going on today. I've got a bottom layer with the Tommy Art paint. I've got um, Copic coloring on the back of my vellum with these beautiful stamps from Dare to Be Artsy. I also used their ink to do the stamping. Um, I've got, used um, the At You Speaker on top and a little bit on the journal page. I also used um, Akira Reno Wink, and this is a paint pen, also water-based, to do some of the work, um, opaque work with the writing, and then um, also with, on top of the vellum. So that, because it's water-based, I can still do on top of the vellum, and it's not going to disturb that ink. Um, really simple page, but I've got some, um, just just where I want it, so I'll probably add maybe a paper clip or something to mark my page on that one. Make sure the um, ink is completely dry from the gold paint pen. And then I'm gonna pull over real quick. This is that original page I created, and I just wanted to show you. First of all, this is completely dry. And it's probably been about 15 minutes, maybe, since I started it, but I just wanted to show you if I fold this, and obviously this is a thin coat, but if I fold this, it actually doesn't crack at all. So I actually could um, do a card base and paint the entire card base and still fold it and not have any cracking, which is really kind of a neat benefit um, of the paint. And I think it's really unusual, especially for a matte finished paint. So we see that sometimes in acrylics but this is a chalk paint, so it has that matte finish, which is so beautiful and smooth. I can get this really nice one coat coverage. If I painted it on versus pulling that card, I have a really rich color. You're gonna see more of this from me. Along with this month, you're gonna see more of that Dare to Be Artsy company because they have um, allowed me to come partner with them for a couple times this month as well. So, Thank you for joining me this week. I know it was a lot of stuff going on in the video today. I hope you learned some new stuff and had enjoyed um, the different things I was showcasing today. If you have not done this yet, I would sure appreciate it if you would like our channel for Copic in the Craft Room. We are headed quickly towards 10,000 viewers and we're planning a little celebration at that at that point so make sure to like the channel and encourage your friends to like this channel as well always ask questions in that comment section um, i am actively answering those questions and honoring requests for videos so make sure to put that information in there also go ahead and stop on by copic in the craft room on facebook because we have a ton of copic and crafting inspiration there as well Thank you for joining me this week and have a happy, colorful week.